Several years ago, Dad and I were riding along in his pickup truck talking about people in the community, many of whom were struggling. And I boldly quoted to him Psalm 37, verse 25, where David says, I have been young, now why am I old? I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Dad's quick response was, well, I've seen some of them pretty close to it. <laughs> that stopped me because Dad was a man of great faith. He knew the scriptures well. And yet he was pointing out that God hadn't taken very close care of some of those people. Stop and think about the world today and then ask if we have misunderstood some of God's promises of care and protection. Have we made more of them than he meant or brought them into areas that he didn't intend them to go? I think of COVID-19. It is a serious illness. Some people have died from it and it's brought additional complications. Some are taking care of their other health issues because they don't want to sit in the doctor's office. So we have more heart attacks now than we had 10 months ago. Or I think again of the depression and anxiety, even in young adults that you read about, all because of COVID. Move beyond COVID to other health issues. They're going on just as much as they were before it hit. Move to a totally different area. How about persecution? Bother to stop and read about what's going on in the Middle East today. If a Muslim converts to Christianity in Iran, he's likely to be arrested and, cost, and charged with a fine of $180,000. Two years ago, Christians in Egypt reported that they were experiencing unprecedented persecution. Today, in Syria, Christians just disappear. You can read about it online. Moved to a totally different area. Tropical storm Marco just ravaged Hispaniola. Lake City's church does some work in Haiti. Some people in Haiti died. Were they all unbelievers? No, some of them surely were God's children. So where was God? He answers one prayer affirmatively and says to another, no, I won't do that. Are we to increase our faith, is that the issue? Are we to pray more accurately, is that the issue? I remind you, God has never told me to figure him out, to answer for him. He's told me what my responsibilities are. We can take care of our responsibilities. And what are those? Number one, keep praying. James chapter five says that we're to pray for the sick. Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 2 says, pray for the governmental leaders that we may live peaceful and quiet lives. Keep on praying, even when you think he gives a lot of negative answers. Number two, rejoice in all of God's goodness. Even when a blessing falls on your neighbor and not on you, give thanks and praise for God's goodness. Third, when things get tough, don't lose heart. Keep going. Paul told Timothy, endure hardship with me. Or rejoice, be glad. Now that's from the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter five. When we are persecuted, rejoice and be glad. That's tough, but we can when we, our focus is on the Lord and what he has set for us as precedent. And then last, and perhaps an underlying principle, let's make sure that we never take up residence in this world. Everything here is fleeting, temporary. It's hardly ours anyway. We're going somewhere else today. Keep on praying, give thanks, endure, rejoice, and don't take up residence here.